everybody, and welcome into the H&M Trucking Podcast. I am your host, Marcus Bridges. Appreciate you all being here today. The day before Thanksgiving is when this thing launches, and this is our Thanksgiving episode. I'm super excited about it. We're working in a bunch of cameos today, people that you sometimes hear from a lot, people that maybe you haven't heard from in a while are going to stop by today's episode and give their thanks, and I'm always excited about that. I've got a little bit of a trucker wish list for you coming up a little bit later today. Uh, you know, everybody on Thanksgiving immediately shifts gears as soon as the dishes are done. It's Christmas, and, and maybe that's not you. Maybe you're one of those people that doesn't like Christmas. This next month might be kind of tough on you because I am a Christmas kid. Now, I don't mean that I'm going to get out and decorate the house on Thanksgiving or I'm going to, you know, put all the put the Christmas tree up and all the ornaments on. I'm okay waiting for that a little bit. I love the feeling that Christmas brings. I love the fact that for one month out of the year, all of a sudden people want to say something to you in public that doesn't include an expletive. Okay, I love the happy holidays, the Merry Christmas, and, and I don't have a dog in that fight either a lot of people say happy holidays not everybody celebrates christmas or say merry christmas or you're you're bastardizing the season i don't care say anything to me you could look at me in the street and be like happy vanilla pudding and i'd be like yeah christmas i'm all about it okay so i'm gonna have a lot of energy this next month we're gonna talk about some christmas themed things for sure on this show uh you can guarantee that but coming up a little bit later in the in the program here, I'm going to bring you some of the top gifts according to the interwebs for truck drivers. Now, there was a lot of places that I looked for these types of gifts, like, uh, you know, basic blog sites. And then I went to Amazon who had a list and everything. I actually went looking for some gifts that truck drivers want, not something that someone thinks a truck driver would want. OK, so hopefully there's going to be a little bit of substance to this list and not just a bunch of junk on there. But as always, you can tell me what you think. Interact with us on our socials. Uh, you'll see the post for this. If you think that one of those things is great that shows up on the list, let me know. If you think that these that this is just a list of trash, don't give me any of this stuff. I want to know that, too. OK, I might have to buy a gift for a trucker at some point in time in my life, and I want to make sure that it's a damn good one. So without further ado, we're going to get to the episode here. As I said, we've got some cameos working in. We'll hear from president of H&M Trucking, James Fonda, in a little bit. And we're going to get an awesome driver interview. So strap in. It's episode 36 of the H&M Trucking Podcast. We're celebrating Thanksgiving because tomorrow it's Christmas. From Omaha, Nebraska, to whatever lane you're driving, this is the H&M Trucking Podcast with your host, Marcus Bridges. Executive Vice President Dale Cook has stopped by the podcast to join us real quick. Dale, do you have a favorite Thanksgiving memory you could share with us? Hmm. You know, I hadn't given that a lot of thought, Marcus, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are, I have plenty of those memories. But, you know, well, I thought you were going to ask me what I'm thankful for this time of year. And I was going to say I'm thankful for golf and beer and pizza, <laughs> you know, those important things. That works, then, too. And but then I realize you're probably talking about what am I thankful for at H and M. So well, I'm thankful H and M pays me well, so I can afford golf and beer and pizza. Um, but um, favorite memories, of course, mine. I'll, I'll go back to childhood, spending time with your grandparents. Uh, grew up on a family farm. My grandparents uh, were involved in farming also, and it was always kind of a big gathering or event. And you know, my my memories are. Or my grandpa always telling the same joke to you three weeks in a row. Um, but, but, you know, my, my grandma ch- chain smoking cigarettes and my mom yelling at her to stop. Um, you know, but it was, you know, family is not perfect, but we were all thankful for each other. And what, what brought my mind was it was probably seven or eight years ago. And my dad has passed away in the last year or so, but my dad was a very stern, strong fisted kind of guy, right? And for years and years, I worked on him by saying, and, and my entire family has this little phrase now, when we get ready, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, everybody, when we see each other, when we get ready to leave, we don't, we don't make a big ooey gooey thing about, oh, I love you or something, but it's just love you by with a wave. And you could never even get that out of my dad. He was just kind of, he'd kind of grunt, right? <laughs> and as he got older, it was probably 10 years ago, eight or 10 years ago, and he said, 
finally one day we were getting ready to leave and it was at Thanksgiving time. And he turned around and he looked at everybody and said, it was at my house and he said, love you, bye. And out the door he went. And he said it every time until he passed away at age 87. Okay. So those are my memories of Thanksgiving. It's all about family and a group. And, and, uh, we, we always appreciate those things. And we're, we're going to have everybody at our house again this year. Anybody, and so if you're around Marcus, you're welcome to come too. Cause we'll, we'll, we'll feed everybody and have a good time. Oh, so. I'm going to miss it by a week or two, Dale, but, uh, I really appreciate, you know, you're the first one to actually invite me to their house, uh, out of all the people I've talked to. So I really appreciate that. And, and that was perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. It only took you your entire life, but you finally broke your dad and got him to participate in the family tradition of love you by. Mm-hmm. And I love that yep. story. That's yep. great. Anyway, well, so, no, fun, fun. I uh, I will give you the floor too, uh, to to let us uh, know what you're thankful for. Obviously, golf, beer, and the good paycheck from H and M. As far as uh, the people that you work with, the drivers, uh, any of your family or anything like that, anything like that that you're thankful for uh, in the in the world at large, the floor is yours. Please hit us with it. Well, you know, you know, I, I'm always thankful. I, you know, in, in the December first will be 29 years for me at H and M Trucking, so I'm thankful to the Muller and Fonda families for putting up with me all this time for all those other employees that are here and have been here. And we had a recent retirement and I, you know, I got a little nostalgic thinking about all the names and faces and you know, I couldn't possibly thank them all because we're talking about thousands of drivers and hundreds and hundreds of employees over that time period. But you know, they, they're what makes H&M great, the people that work here. And so I'd like to thank each and every one of them um, from top to bottom. You know, they're, they're all super duper important especially those drivers out there. I, as I always tell everyone when I get off the phone, just keep that shiny side up for us and everything will be just fine. That's as great as you could put it, Dale. I really appreciate the time today. I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving with your family and uh, I'm taking a rain check. Maybe next year I'll get out there for Thanksgiving and join you. All right. Uh, we, you'd be welcome anytime. All right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, you, know, you might be, at, you might be at the kid's table, but we'll include you. You know what? That's where my family puts me still and I'm pushing 40 Dale. So I get it. It's I totally right. understandable. <laughs> All right. Thanks young man. Appreciate your time. Thanks Dale. Have a good one. You bet. Take care. We got another cameo here from Van Division Manager Brian Gernant. And uh, Brian, I got to ask, are you a big tradition guy when it comes to Thanksgiving? You got like a, a family flag football game or anything like that that goes on at the big gathering each year? Well, to be honest with you, I'm at that age now where trying to play any kind of football game kind of injures me for a few days later. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> yeah, so my my big activity for the day is to sit down at a dinner table and share time with family and friends, whether that be outreaching from multiple states to just local territorial family. So I just really look forward for that one day, 24 hour stance where I can sit down and kick back and be with my friends and families in whatever shape or fashion form it, it, it melds into. This year, I'll be staying local within a couple hours of Omaha to be with friends and family. So Awesome. Well, I hope that goes really well for you. I'm super glad to hear that you're going to get to see some family. Uh, And and now I just want to give you the floor, Brian. Um, I've been offering uh, those of you that are coming on just the ability to say anything to anyone, and that includes your family, uh, anybody in the H&M family. Uh, The floor is yours. Good, sir. Yep, yep. So, you know, I really always thank God for all those blessings upon me and my family. That's first and foremost in my life. I'm grateful to our H&M family here for all of the daily sacrifices our drivers do for us and our customers. Their work out on the road, in my opinion, second to none. H&M Trucking is successful because of our drivers, and I thank you, drivers. I'm also blessed to work with such a great staff of people here in Omaha. I can honestly say that we all strive every day to work and make H&M more successful and a company that can be acknowledged as one of the best companies to work for, especially here in Omaha. We all take great pride in our work and we do and are thankful for the faith that Randy, James and their families entrust in us to move H&M forward. I'm blessed to live in America. And my thoughts and prayers of this Thanksgiving, excuse me, go out to the families that are dealing with homeless and health issues today. We've seen it. We know it. It's happening all over the world. I pray for them. I pray for everybody that's listening to this podcast. 
you and your families. Thank you. God bless. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, that is that yeah. is very well said, and uh, we really appreciate the time. And uh, from everybody here at this podcast to you and yours, uh, thank you for everything that you do uh, for H&M and beyond. And uh, we hope that you have a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Marcus. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Thank you. Knowledge and stories from coast to coast. This is your driver profile. It's time for our driver profile here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. And with me today is H&M van driver, Mike Hermes. Mike, thank you so much for being here today, my friend. You're welcome. Now, Mike, you and I were chatting a little bit when we set this interview up, and uh, you told me about a career that you had before you were a truck driver, and I got to get into that. Uh, talk to me about when you used to jump out of helicopters to save people's lives. Well, I was that was actually a side job as a hobby. I worked as a HVAC service tech for uh, a large building at Michigan Consolidate Gas Company, and then... Uh, after Mishcon, uh was bought out in 95, I worked at uh, Lawrence Technological University as on-campus uh, heating and cooling deck. And on the weekends, I was uh, water rescue for offshore powerboat racing. And now that makes you like a certified diver and, and, and dive master and everything, right? You were very well qualified to do that job. Yes, I, uh, the minimum requirements to do that job was a rescue diver. By that time, I was already a certified uh, master diver with a dive master rating on top of that. And I'd already uh, logged over a year of bottom time in. Wow, that's amazing. So how did you get started with that? Because you said it was kind of a, a side gig and a hobby um, not too many people I know, Mike, uh, have a hobby of jumping out of helicopters into freezing cold ocean water to save, uh, to save boat drivers. How did you get mixed up in that? That became possible because I got involved with, um, limited and then the unlimited hydroplane racing series in region six, which is, uh, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Pennsylvania, uh, I would go to the races for the Silver Cup Series, which was a offshore race series that raced in the Great Lakes under Region 6 of the American Powerboat Association. And when they disbanded, they went to OPA Racing, and we went from there. So did you ever drive any of these boats uh, before you got into the rescue side of things? Were you ever a, a mechanic or a, or a driver or anything like that? No. Well, I, I got to tell you, that's probably the smart decision there because uh, you, you had all the stuff that you needed to be equipped for saving lives. Uh, sometimes I wonder if uh, some of those hydroplane racers don't have a death wish. Well, we first started doing that. That was... Just as the enclosed cockpit came out for the hydroplanes, uh, prior to that, their cockpits were all open, and now they're all an enclosed capsule. And so with an open uh, cockpit, that pretty much spells the end if those guys get into a, a really bad accident, I would assume. Yeah, yeah about 99% fatality rate without a... Uh, that's what happened to Bill Muncie, an unlimited driver. He was the, one of the greatest unlimited drivers in the world. Uh, he drove Atlas van lines. If anybody followed unlimited hydroplane racing in his 80s, uh, he was killed in Mexico City in a flip of Miss uh, Atlas race boat and was killed in Mexico City because of the you're look at 190 mile an hour. You're like hitting the water. That's like hitting a six inch to the six inch to uh, one foot thick piece of concrete on the roadway. Wow, that's that's nuts. I mean, I you know I took part in a lot of water sports as a younger kid, a lot of water skiing and wakeboarding, and even hitting the water at anywhere between 20 and 30 miles an hour can be incredibly painful. I imagine that's just exponential as you get up into the 
hundreds and, and, and multiple hundreds of miles per hour that those boats clip across the water. Um, how many, uh, it, it, maybe you could estimate this for me because it might be more than you can even count, but how many water rescues have you been involved in, Mike? Ah, uh, I know exactly the number. Uh, I was involved in, um, 35, uh, rescues where we had to go get the driver out, uh, out of those 35 rescues, 35 successful. That means the driver was alive, breathing at the hospital and survived the, the entire wreck. That's amazing. Well, that is something to really hang your hat on. Uh, it sounds like you were really good at that job. Well, a lot of training, a lot of training, a lot of swimming. I was, when I got out of it, I was actually averaging swimming, just training for that. I was averaging about five miles a week in the water swimming. Wow. Moving it on, either, either on scuba gear, breathing underwater, doing a scuba dive, or on the water in a pool swimming laps. I bet you were in the best shape of your life at that point in time, weren't you? I was in pretty decent <laughs> shape, I would think. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, that's, a, that's a lot of cardio. Uh, to give you an idea, every race, when I started, every race, once they went to a ghost cockpit, which we had to develop a training regiment to train the drivers how to get out. And we had to be trained also on how to get them out because mm -hmm. now they were all five-point harnessed in. We had to get knowledge about uh, Kevlar seatbelts because they were wearing the same uh, seatbelts as NASCAR. Those seatbelts are made of Kevlar. <laughs> you right. can't just walk up with a pair of scissors <laughs> and think you're going to cut through it. It's, it's just going to have to have scissors. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to come up with it. You got to get all the equipment just to cut the belt. Because if you can't, if the, for some reason, the logging mechanism can, well, you got no choice. You got to cut the belt. They're underwater. Uh, they got limited time. You can have them underwater before they expire. You, uh, our goal was to get them out of the boat, on the backboard, on the surface, on the rescue boat, and the shore within five minutes. Wow. I could get somebody out of a boat in two minutes. I could backboard them. And we cheated. We never used uh, the buckles on a backboard. If you've ever seen a backboard, they got buckles like seatbelts on them. Uh -huh. We didn't use those. We took those off. We used duct tape. <laughs> it's a little bit quicker, right? <laughs> Just grab the roll of duct tape, baby, and start mummifying. <laughs> well, we got yelled at by many of uh, ER doctors that literally got the guy at the hospital, and there was a roll of duct tape at the top of his helmet that's totally used up. And uh, the guy's just looking at it and going, well, obviously, you can't move. And the guy goes, no, and the bastard didn't allow my head to move. He goes, well, we can x-ray you perfectly now. <laughs> <laughs> then they have to cut him off the back, uh, cut all the duct tape. And the ER doctor says, you know, a little excessive to use all roll. <laughs> <laughs> And then all you got to do is show them your perfect record of, uh, of of guys surviving your extractions and say, hey, anything that works, right? Oh, uh, well, that was uh, actually came up by um, a guy that was a retired fire chief that was part of the rescue team. And that was his suggestion. Get rid of the buckle. Let's just use duct tape. <laughs> duct tape might be the most universal tool out there I, I mean i'm sure you got a good roll of duct tape in your truck right now too don't you yeah i got two or three <laughs> yeah it always comes through in a pinch mike no question about it no question about it well with those examples all i need is a stick and a roll of duct tape and i got a splint there you, you ain't moving it yep there you go so, how did you get into your career as as a truck driver, Mike? Two thousand eight. Um, 
the auto, automobile industry took the big dump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Lawrence Tech University is a a lot of automotive design engineers go there. Electrical engineering. It's an engineering school. It's a private university uh-huh. in Southfield, Michigan. It's a top ten private university for also management and uh, uh, automobile engineer design engineers and architects. And when the auto industry, GM and Chrysler both went bankrupt, a lot of those engineers dropped classes that they were taking for doctorates and masters at the time. Mm-hmm. And the enrollment literally in the middle of school year dropped 40%. Wow. Well, the university has to cut staff. You can't cut professors, you still got to give the classes. So the only staff you can cut is your union staff and uh, administration. They took the building maintenance department and said, okay, well, we don't need two boiler technicians on staff. And that's what I was. I was the, one of the boiler technicians. And I was low man on a tunnel bowl, and the other guy had 30 years there. Uh, so I, I got laid off. So that's how I ended up driving trucks. And uh, have you been with H&M ever since you started, or uh, did you come to H&M later in your career? I came in uh, H&M five years ago. And how would you say it compares to the other companies that you've uh, worked for? Excellent company I work for. Uh, I have no complaints. They treat me well, but they get me home when I need to get home. In fact, when I was going through orientation, my dad had a, a massive heart attack. While I was at orientation, they, they said, you need to get back home right now. I'm like, uh, no, I talked to my brother. I talked to my sister. I actually talked to my dad, and there was basically, he was going to be all right. The scary part was on the 21st of November of that year, uh, which was also my birthday, <laughs> <laughs> he had a uh, quadruple heart bypass. Oh, wow. Surgery. And that was two days after I finished orientation. They were going to have me drive a load back towards Detroit and go home. But I was, uh, you know, I was just being away. There's no no reason to be there. Uh, my my little brother is very dependable. My little brother is a retired army and a U.S. Customs Border Protection. And currently, right now, he is number two in the city of Detroit office for U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. He was there. He was handling it. Uh, no reason for me to be there. What am I going to do? Get in the way? Walk around the house? Uh, there's enough people at the hospital. I don't need to be there. If there's an issue, yeah, then I'll need to get home. But there was no issues. Uh, and uh, I just stayed out on the road. Well, no ha- reason to go racing home. But it sounds like if you would have needed to go home, that H&M had your back there. And they were going to send you home if that's where you wanted to be. Yeah, if I needed to get home, they were going to fly me out of, out of home all to Detroit. Very cool. Well, I, I hear that a lot, Mike, about uh, about H and M and how it's it's very important. You know, they they are a very family oriented company, and they want to uh, make sure and and be there for you in times of need. And it's just another story that reinforces that culture that we hear about so often on this podcast. I, I want to move into asking you a little bit about your Thanksgiving plans, Mike. Are you are you staying out on the road for Thanksgiving? Are you going home to the family? What's uh, what are the the what's the future hold for you as far as Thanksgiving's concerned this year? I'll be at home and have a Thanksgiving dinner. Perfect. And what's your what's your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? What's your favorite uh, uh, thing on the table? Got to be candy and sweet potatoes. That's a that's a big one. I hear that a lot. Uh, people love those sweet potatoes. You know, Eve Essery uh, has a really good recipe for sweet potatoes. If you're ever needing one, uh, I think she called it sweet potato souffle. So it's something that uh, you might you might knock on her door about that next time you're in Omaha. See if you can get that recipe from her. 
Well, I, I, we're using the recipe from my uh, great great grandma Herms, who came over in 1912 uh, through Ellis Island. She immigrated, and she brought that back from her ma. Uh, and, and as a story in herself, she was uh, 14 years old and decided to move to the United States. That's from, amazing. Um, and you're still making that recipe today. How cool. And she taught everybody how to make that. When great-grandmother died, which I'm fortunate I got to know my great-grandmother real well. Uh, my great-grandmother died at 98. And I was in junior high school. I lost my great grandmother on my uh, dad's side. Also, when I was in seventh grade, they both died within two years of each other, or two months of each other, I should say. I got to know my grandfather and grandma real well, and I just recently lost, 10 years back, lost my grandmother. On my dad's side, and my grandfather prior to that, and on my dad's side, my grandpa, he passed away 10 years prior to her. And then on my mom's side, I lost her mother in 2002, and on my grandpa in uh, 2012. He lived another 10 years. They were, they all passed away roughly at about 92 to 93 years of age. So you got some good gene pools working there. Uh, <laughs> nice long lives. You can't argue with 90 years plus, right? Uh, great grandmother lived actually to 98. Wow. That's amazing. And the bad part was you did get a, she was German and she was only four foot two. Don't get. <laughs> The four foot two great grandma Matt. I will tell you, she will <laughs> kick your behind across the field. <laughs> and, and do it, do it, cussing you out in turn. <laughs> well, I think it's really cool, Mike, that you've got a, a over 100 year old recipe that you're going to be having at Thanksgiving this year. Uh, very cool that you guys keep that family tradition up. And I, I'm really happy to hear that you're going to get to spend some time uh, over the holiday with your family this year. That's uh, that's that's really good news. You know, I know that's not always the case for, for every driver out there and uh, warms my heart to know that you're going to be back home getting a little bit of time to kick your feet up. Well, uh, you know, the other tradition when I was doing the boat rescue was I would have Thanksgiving dinner and about two, uh, two hours after dinner, uh, that's also the, the weekend of the, the offshore powerball racing world championships in Key West, Florida. So I would literally have Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, my birthday is so close to Thanksgiving. My birthday was celebrate always at Thanksgiving. Go two hours after eating, have to leave the house, hop on a plane, fly down to Key West to be on the race circuit for the next morning. Wow. That's quite the, yeah. quite the swing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. There's no major airport. They can't land the 737 in Key West. Right. So I got to fly to Miami, go from one side of the terminal all the way around the airport, which is 15 miles around it, to the private aviation section, get out of Cessna, or other similar two-engine prop plane and fly into Key West. And the airport at Key West is five miles outside of town. Well, there's no taxis in Key West. <laughs> so I would have to walk five miles of the hotel. Hell of a birthday present, that, that trip, it sounds like. <laughs> well, what I would do is I would send everything down. I'd even pack a bag of clothes. Send it all down with uh, one of the race teams that were actually based out of Detroit. And he drove um, unlimited, I should say, um, 
what they call super stock. It's a 32 foot, uh, eight foot wide V bottom boat. They're running twin, uh, 550 horsepower Mercury Marine engines turning two props. Well, that, that boat was rated at the staying class. They couldn't go over 170 miles an hour. Wow. Um, and that boat, that team lived, uh, based out of Detroit. So I would just go over to the race team and drop my gear off with them. They'd throw it in the hauler and take all my gear down for me. And so when I got into Detroit or Key West, all I had to do was walk there carrying a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> that's good because that scuba gear is not light. You don't want to be carrying that uh, stuff for five miles. Nah, well, we were, I had typically when we were loaded up with all the rescue equipment we needed, uh, including what we call the cockpit hatch cover popping tool, which is basically take a one inch diameter conduit, rigid conduit, and crush the end down and flatten it out. So it was, uh, inch, inch and a quarter wide is what it would end up. You could slide over the, um, uh, handle for the cop bit lock and it was only a foot long and you could push on it and give you some leverage to un, unlatch the hatch to get in. A lot of them used the same hatch that the F-16 did where you push in, it pops out and you, it got a long bar. Well, I had another foot do it so I could turn that locking mechanism loose to get the hatch to come loose. Mm -hmm. The boats were designed that they're waterproof. So if they're, if I got to come in the bottom hatch because I can't get to the top hatch, which is, they have two hatches. They have a hatch in the floor and that's actually normally the bottom of the boat. And, but if for some reason we couldn't access that hatch, we would go underwater and spring the hatch underneath and now you gotta fry that hatch open because it's being pushed by water pressure and you gotta break the seal. You gotta you you gotta have something leverage to pull that hatch to get water to start flooding in to equalize the pressure to open that hatch. Right. So you gotta have some leverage. And that was our, that was a simple solution. That was the, the one pound tool. <laughs> and then the, um, I carried a hatchet for doing a house, uh, roofing on your house. Mm -hmm. Call a roofing hat, hatchet. But we would, we took the edge and sharpened it real sharp. So I could cut wood with it. If we had to chop a hole, because let's say two boats were tangled up. And the easiest way to get to all four drivers was to go through the side of the boat. These boats are made out of Kevlar and carbon fiber. Usually the hull thickness is 10 to 12 layers. And you got your work cut out for you. You're going to be chopping. <laughs> and and in the, the, the area where the driver's in, there was a requirement. The requirement is whatever the boat weighed, that was the crush force for crushing that cell. That had to be able to survive. So you basically had to be able to flip that boat upside down, lift it 10 feet in the air, and drop it on concrete and that not be stored. Mm -hmm. And that usually was anywhere between 28. 30 layers of Kevlar and carbon fiber. Wow. And it was a weave. So, uh, getting in the safety cell could take a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, and this guy go, uh, which is a race team that's no longer in existence. They, they stopped racing uh, three years ago. They sold the team. Uh, it's now Husky Racing. Uh, for Husky Tools, 
their boat is, was 53 feet long, 15 feet wide, uh, six foot from bottom of the boat to the deck. And as I told you, they were running, uh, for a long time, T-55 turbine, uh, engines versus what in the, what's in the Cobra attack helicopter. Mm-hmm. Well, they were running two of them at 6,000 horsepower on shaft. Wow. And they're running two shafts spinning 12 bladed or 24 bladed, depending on the race course, 40 inch diameter props. Made out of stainless steel. The torque that that must be able to pull under the water has just got to be amazing to witness. Well, those in a uh, uh, race boat, this is not like your regular boat. You can grab your rope prop with your bare hands, and you'll have all your fingers and digits. Offshore, unlimited hydro, or even limited hydros, that blade... Uh, the leading edge, the thinnest part of the blade, is razor sharp. Oh, wow. As so- in, you touch it, you just amputated your own finger. Wow. It will literally, it'll literally cut your finger off touching it. Just grabbing it momentarily is enough to cut your fingers off. We we would have to wrap, you know, we, we're getting on scene. There's two of us in the boat, or two in the chopper, and there's usually a rescue boat that shows up, too. They got two other divers. When we're in from the chopper deployed, getting the guys out, the other guys on the boat, their job was to cover the props. No. So there's no chance anybody sure. getting cut. They would take uh, the airbags from your car is made out of color. We got used airbags out of the junkyards, made them so we could wrap them around the pl- uh, props, see, uh, pull a string at them, and tighten it up around them so the, the, the blades are covered. Sure. Less so- chance of somebody getting cut. Yeah, right, right. And well, you're talking, these boats were going any, uh, the unlimited offshores were going anywhere between uh, 310, 330. In the straightaway, 290 in the turns. Hey, you're talking about just it. Literally, when they flipped, it took them three, four hundred yards before the boat stopped. <laughs> That's crazy, Mike. Well, this has been awesome to to listen to some of these stories and and learn about this. I've always been interested in in boat racing. Uh, my dad actually has uh, has been a co pilot in a couple of Cracker Box. Uh, boat races and uh, some of the stories that he tells me watching guys wreck and how bad some of these boats can be is, is uh, it, it's amazing to be honest with you. And, and they're not going anywhere near as fast as these hydroplanes are. So uh, it, it, that's that's awesome. Thank you so much for for telling us these stories. I'm running up against the clock here, though, Mike, I'm, I'm going to have to to cut the interview off here. But before I do, I want to give you the same chance that I give all the H and M drivers. I talk to on this podcast. And that's, uh, if there's anything you would like to say to your fellow drivers or any family that might be listening or anybody back at the home office staff, I want to give you the floor and, and give you a chance to, uh, to say your piece to those people. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's great working for this company. You got a driver here who's planning on retiring. Oh, uh, uh, I do have a safety message that I always try to follow. And uh, the ironicity of this message is uh, it's on a vessel that sunk in Lake Superior in the 18, or 1900s. The Chester A. Kogan, a step in the dark is dangerous. Always plan your moves. Because that vessel ran aground in fog through for planning. But that's a sign on the back of the vessel underwater to this day. A step in the dark is dangerous. Always plan your moves. So uh, for all drivers, I mean, that's a standard. You know, always plan what you're doing. Hey, you got doubts. Get out and look and plan your moves because it's dangerous to take that step in the dark. You don't know what's on the other side.
Very well said, Mike. Thank you so much again for being here today, my friend. And uh, you be safe out there uh, and, and get home safe for Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. All right, Mike? Yeah, I will. Me and my dog, you, uh, Tommy, are all always practice safe driving. So that's what we're doing. Awesome. Well, we'll talk to you soon, okay? We'll get you back on the podcast sometime in the future. Okay. Thanks, Mike. You guys have an happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Service and Equipment Manager Jim Musel joins us on the podcast real quick. Jim, one item on the Thanksgiving table that you will have extra of and one item that you won't touch this year. Wow. I'm going to say leaving on the table is going to be the bread roll. Because of the not filler? Enough. It's kind of a filler, right? It's not really kind there for anything. Yeah. 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 It's going to be... It's, you know the worst part. It's going to sound worse because it's going to be it's going to be stuffing with with gravy on it. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with that, man. I always have a second <laughs> or a third helping of stuffing. Like it's too yeah. good, and and you don't get it enough. Like I I kind of think that I would be on the committee of can we have stuffing like five or six times a year instead of once or twice? Right. Okay. Well, it's good to know. You know, I just want to get to know you a little bit more every time we do this, Jim. And now I know oh, that you're right. a stuffing and gravy guy. So yeah, I'm a stuffing and gravy guy. Awesome. Gotta have all that. <laughs> well, I'm offering <laughs> uh, everybody that's coming on here and thank you once again for uh, for spending some time with us today. But I want to uh-huh. give you the opportunity. You got a lot of people working beneath you over there at the shop. I know you run a tight ship. Just wanted to have you on here and see if there was uh, any thanks that you wanted to give to Anybody at H and M, the drivers, your family, anything like that, the floor is yours. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank you for calling me and wanting me to do all these podcasts. <laughs> I want to thank you for sure. Is <laughs> that, you laughing? Is that tone yeah. firmly implanted in cheek there, Jim? I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome, baby. No, I, I want to. I just want to wish everybody a, a happy holiday. Um, from on the road, been there before, ran that road too. Um, just want to make sure they're all safe on the road and, and they call their families if they're gone and wish them all the best and everybody here too for what they do here and a good holiday. I like it. Short and sweet, Jim. Uh, you know, having you, having the experience that you have being out there on the road and then also the experience in the shop and running things there. Um, you have a very unique perspective. Did you ever have to uh, miss Thanksgiving with the family while you were out on the road? No, I, I Thanksgiving wasn't, but uh, did uh, a lot of Easter's, Fourth of July time, New Year's, couple years. So usually Thanksgiving, Christmas, I was usually try to get home for, but the other holidays, I knew I had to skip out sometimes. Sure, sure. Well, it is a unique perspective that you have, and uh, we just appreciate you coming on here and chatting with us for a few minutes. Like I said, I promised you before we got started here, I was going to keep this short for you, so I'm going to let you get back to it. Have a happy Thanksgiving with you and yours, Jim, and uh, and we really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate it. You have a good holiday. Hope I hope your Ducks win this weekend. You and me both, brother, and next weekend, too, and then uh, you'll know if they won both weeks because – I'll see you probably the week after that. And uh, if, oh, I'm, that sounds great. if I'm smiling, that means we're still winning. So, oh, that's good. All right, Jim, take care. Yeah, you too. All right. So far, so good here on our Thanksgiving episode of the H&M Trucking Podcast. Uh, but I do want to get to a little bit of news here real quick because Eve sent me this uh, article. And and again, I stress, you guys don't know how incredibly important to this podcast that Eve is. Uh, but she sent me this article and I thought it would be a good idea to maybe uh, maybe read you a little bit of it because it has to do with an issue that we've been talking about on this podcast recently. And that is truck parking. This news release comes from the American Trucking Associations. Uh, The blog post is titled National Truck Parking Shortage, a growing safety concern for all motorists. Um, Basically, uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg noted back in September at the unveiling of a new truck parking facility in South Dakota that the parking shortage isn't just an inconvenience for truckers and a strain on the supply chain. It's a serious safety hazard for the entire motoring public. 
a point that leading law enforcement organizations across the nation are now sounding the alarm over. Brenda Neville, who's president of the Iowa Motor Truck Association, delivered this message on Capitol Hill this week, testifying on behalf of the ATA before the U.S. Senate Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee. She warned Congress that this crisis will continue to worsen if lawmakers fail to act. Over the next decade, trucks will be tasked with moving 2.4 billion more tons of freight than they do today. That means more trucks and more drivers to meet consumer demand, requiring even more parking spaces. Now, working with the ATA, Secretary Buttigieg has made funding uh, truck parking projects a priority of his department, pledging discretionary grant funding under the bipartisan infrastructure law to states that need it and apply for it. There's a lot of word salad here. So basically, I just took this truck parking letter to governors by ATA Media and uh, distilled it down a little bit. I'm just going to read you some excerpts from this letter, and then I'll tell you at the end who wrote this letter. But this letter goes out to all 50 state governments, okay? According to, this is quote, by the way, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, 98% of truck drivers regularly experience difficulty finding safe parking, a sharp uptick from the 75% figure reported just four years earlier. The U.S. Department of Transportation also found that truck parking shortage exists in every state and every region. Year after year, truck drivers had indicated that the parking shortage is one of the top three challenges they face, rising to number one in 2022. With the volume of freight moved by trucks expected to increase by more than 21 percent over the next decade, this problem is only going to get worse. We'll skip ahead a little bit in the letter. Uh, it says here, quote, one survey found that 84 percent of drivers feel unsafe when parked in unauthorized areas. And this is especially true for female drivers. Law enforcement officers also face a difficult decision, either force a truck driver to relocate, placing them in violation of their hours of service rules and taking a risk that the drivers may be too fatigued to drive safely or allow the drivers to remain parked illegally. The bottom line is that safety is compromised when truck parking is not readily available. I think we all know that. Moving on, the letter continues to state, Truck drivers are the backbone of our society and our economy. Without them, the daily conveniences we take for granted, from fresh water to fuel to the literal roofs over our heads, would not exist. We urge you to examine the availability of truck parking within your state and take such actions as are necessary to ensure that truck drivers have a safe place to sleep when they are not out on the road delivering more than 70% of America's freight. We hope that you will use the aforementioned resources as well as other non-federal resources to prioritize and address this serious safety program. What are those resources? Well, they're listed in the in the letter as well. Um, some of them are the National Highway Performance Program, the Surface Transportation Block Grant Program, Highway Safety Improvement Program, Carbon Reduction Program, and the National Highway Freight Program. Additionally, uh, transportation agencies can apply to the U.S. Department of Transportation for grants under a number of discretionary programs, including the Nationally Significant Multimodal Freight and Highway Projects Program, the National Infrastructure Project Assistance Mega Program, Local and Regional Project Assistance Program, and the Rural Surface Transportation Grant Program. This letter was penned by Chris Spear, who is uh, of the American Trucking Associations, Mark Colson, Alabama Trucking Association, Ryan Streblo, National Tank Truck Carriers, and Jim Ward, Truckload Carriers Association. So look, that's all really good stuff, okay? We've got the uh, Transportation Secretary on it. Uh, Pete Buttigieg also had a quote in this article that I want to read. He says, quote, I know that truck parking is an issue that most Americans probably don't think about every day, but it's a vitally important one. And that's because it's a life and death issue. Once again, that's your U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Um, I agreed 100 percent. Look, I talked to enough drivers on this program and just in my life in general to know that this is one of those problems that continues to surface and has surfaced for years. And what this article is saying is that there are grants available. It's just tough because when you were thinking about the roads, you know, one of the if, if you guys don't know this a little nugget of history here, 
way back when the drinking age was kind of just a suggestion and not really a mandated thing. Part of getting that drinking age up to 21 years of age was for the states to put that age within their state at 21 years of age. And then the federal government will maintain the interstates within their states. Okay, so Idaho was one of the last states to cross this picket line. They wanted to keep their uh, their drinking age at 18 or maybe it was even 17 at the time. I had to have to check, but. Effectively, they were paying to maintain their own roads, and that gets really expensive. So finally, Idaho bit the bullet and said, "Okay, you got to be 21 to drink. We'll secure that that highway funding. I think that this is maybe where and this is just one guy's opinion. Okay, and I'm on a podcast. I'm not a politician. I did study political science, but not transportation. Okay, so just understand that this is my opinion here, and, and I would love to hear your opinions, the drivers, the people working within the industry that can tell me more about this, because it's a huge issue, and I feel like one part that we can play on this podcast is to continue talking about it, continue banging the drum until maybe the right ears hear that there are possible programs out there that do have funding for this type of thing. But the states have to ask for it. The federal government is not just going to come in and hand you money. That's not something that they're very good at doing. There has been funding cleared and legislated uh, to be available for these types of things. But if your state that you're working within or any state for that matter isn't asking for this funding, it's not just going to fall out of the sky and allow them to build a bunch of safe and um, and well outfitted parking structures for truck drivers. So I guess maybe call your congressman, call your state senators, call the governors of your state, maybe get into their ears and let them know, hey, we need this parking. This is truly a life and death issue. Okay. It's it's not something that it's just like, oh, it's convenient. No, no, no. There was another stat in this article that says that uh something like 56 minutes on average. This is the American Transportation Research Institute found that drivers on average sacrifice 56 minutes of drive time every day to secure parking. That amounts to a $5,600 annual pay cut on average. This isn't just about finding a place to be comfortable. It's about finding a place to be safe and actually being able to do your job as it was intended to be done. These mandates that keep you within your hours of service aren't meant to uh, give you an extra hour to find a place to park, okay? And they're also, uh, not finding a place to park isn't supposed to cost you money. That's, that's the biggest issues that we're facing here. So I just like to talk about this stuff. I like to have kind of an open discussion with me, myself, and I about it. But if you're a driver out there listening to this right now and you have some thoughts, you want to come on this podcast and share them, I will give you all the time that you need to talk about this issue. So get in touch with Eve, get in touch with your dispatcher, get in touch with your driver manager or anybody else out there. They will get you hooked up with me and I will call you and we can have a talk about this. What else are we doing here? We get important information from H&M to the drivers as quickly as we can. We talk to office staff and uh, company management to make sure that whatever it is that they think is important is out here on these airwaves. But we also talk about the issues at hand, and this is an issue at hand. It's been at hand for a decade now, and it really is costing some people a lot of money, and it could even cost people their lives. It's a safety issue. Let's address it as such, all right? And now I'm going to let Mike mix in a little bit of uh, of happy music here because we're going to move on to our trucker wish list. Uh, we got to shift gears, all right? We're, we're, I'm sweating. My face is turning red. It's time to talk about some fun stuff. So as I was looking around on the internet, I was trying to find some things that made sense as like possible wish list items for truck drivers, okay? And not stuff that Amazon thinks would be good. Like, we're not trying to push this stuff. There's no link that you can click that I'm giving you that's going to make this podcast money. That's not what this is about. I poured over six, seven different lists of anywhere between 30 and 100 gift ideas for truck drivers. And I distilled it down to like five or six because those are the ones that I thought would really make a lot of sense. Some of these have to do with your health. Some of them have to do with safety and some of them are just, you know, they're nuts and bolts type things, really things that we should all be getting the truck drivers in our lives 
to help them be a little bit more comfortable out there on the road while they are moving 70% of America's freight. Uh, one that I haven't heard much about, but I wonder how many truck drivers actually utilize this is an orthopedic memory foam and lumbar support seat cushion. Now listen, memory foam is the best thing since sliced bread, in my opinion. I have a memory foam mattress that I was given for free years ago, and I will that thing will outlive me. I will not ever get rid of it because it has changed sleep for me. And I hear about these memory foam seat cushions, and really, it could do some great things for your health. Uh, if you're in, sitting in a bad position, maybe you're hunched over, or maybe your, your butt's kind of sneaking away from the back of the seat, you're not sitting up straight, all those things can lead to back problems and pain, and we don't want any of that. Semi-truck seats are top tier. There's no question about it. That's one of the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in, but I didn't have to sit in it for eight to 10 hours a day every single day. So if you got a truck driver in your life, you're looking for a gift idea, maybe the orthopedic memory foam and lumbar support seat cushion set should be on your list. And there's a bunch of different ones out there. So uh, do, your, do your research, do your due diligence and find something that'll work for the driver in your life. Uh, I've also got a 12 volt heated electric lunchbox and portable stove. I think this is awesome. Not only is it something that you can keep your food warm in if you make a meal uh, while you're on your break or maybe you make a meal at home, you can plug this thing in and it'll keep it warm. But if you've got something cold out of your fridge that you want to warm up, you can plug this thing in, get a few miles behind you. All of a sudden, boom, warm meal in your lap. I love this. Uh, it's just a 12 volt. Uh, it's real simple. It can pow be powered by your truck, obviously. So, uh, you know, look, I know that I'm not breaking anybody's brain with this. You've all heard of these things. But, hey, it's a pretty good gift idea if you have somebody that doesn't have that in your truck. This one is more on the safety uh, bent of things, and it's called the Guardian Angel Light Device. I'm sure some of you guys out there that are listening either have one of these or have heard about it. Uh, but, you know, it, it's basically meant to help you if your rig breaks down on the side of the road. It's a three-in-one device that features a flashlight, an amber light, and a work light. Uh, and it says, beyond that, what makes the Guardian Angel Light Device a cool gift is that truckers can stick it on their shirts, jackets, or hat when walking at night. And it also has a magnetic mount so you can mount it to your truck. Um, it also has an SOS flash mode, which is always good when you're out there in the middle of nowhere at night, broken down on the side of the road. Maybe you can fix it. Maybe you can't. If you can't and you're in some real trouble, click on that SOS function, man. That is the Guardian Angel light device. Um, and then, you know, I thought again, nuts and bolts type stuff like what we got to fill the stocking with something. How about some compression socks? I hear a lot of drivers talk about how much compression socks help them. Sitting in one place for a long period can be very rough on the body, and compression socks are a great way to help improve blood flow and keep truckers feeling healthy and comfortable. I love this. It's simple, and who doesn't like a nice good pair of socks for Christmas, all right? Uh, hook it up with some of those smart wool socks for hunting season if you're shopping for me. Compression socks for drivers. That's obvious. Uh, this one actually makes it back on the list from last year's wish list, which uh, is way, way down in the unplugged OTR section of this podcast feed. You can go listen to it. Uh, but I love this, and I, I want to try to get this guy on the podcast sometime. He's the author of a book called Trucker Stories from the Glory Days, and it has, is actually an audiobook format with Dave. Uh, the guy who wrote the book, narrating it. It's a collection of trucker stories from the golden years of trucking, narrated by Dave, who is a truck driver for over 42 years with more than 4 million safe miles under his belt. It's a four and a half hour audio book of entertaining old trucker stories, and it includes a section of bonus audio with Dave and the legendary Lettuce King. Uh, it's uncut and unedited. I do not know who the legendary Lettuce King is, but you probably do. So go check that book out if you're shopping for a driver in your life. And finally, the portable, rechargeable, heated hand massager. What? Yeah, I get it. It doesn't sound like something that would be a good gift for a truck driver. But as somebody that uses a keyboard all day and is constantly clutching a mouse with a kung fu grip, you can get carpal tunnel, you can get trigger finger, long hours steering with the wheel can lead to health issues for drivers and their hands and wrists. This thing will help soothe your aching hands after a day of gripping the steering wheel. It's heated 
and it's a portable hand massager. Uh, it's it's really cool. I, I think there's probably more than just the one that I'm looking at here. It looks a little goofy, but if you're just hanging out watching Netflix on your 34, maybe you're trying to uh, just get your sleep for the night, what better way than a little bit of a hand massage to keep things flowing? I love it. This is a great idea for me as well. So put that on Marcus's wish list as well as the trucker wish list. Uh, we got to wrap this up here because I got more to get to on the other end. Uh, but send me your wish list ideas. Hook up with us on the socials. When you see the posts, comment on them, and then I can build a better trucker wish list for next year. One of our favorite guests on the podcast stopped by for an awesome cameo here, and I want to get right to it. Eve Essery from H&M Trucking joins us. Eve, we talked last week about how you've got a big group for Thanksgiving. I know you're going to be doing the cooking. I've asked a lot of people what their favorite food item to eat is, but I got to ask you, what's your favorite thing to cook on Thanksgiving? Oh, I so I make this sweet potato souffle, and actually that is my favorite thing to cook and also my favorite thing to eat so they go hand in hand a sweet potato souffle so can you can you explain that to me a little bit because i'm not sure i've ever had that (laughs) sure so it's like a sweet potato but you um kind of whip them like almost like a mashed potato goes in the base and then on the top it's like uh almost like a crumble kind of on the top of it uh pecan and brown sugar and butter and all the good things goes on top and you bake it really really good it's the best thing to do to sweet potatoes is to add calories to them whether it be butter or sugar or any of that stuff i mean it's yeah all of it it had all of it if i see somebody eating a sweet potato plain i i'm you know i'm sorry for those of you that like them out there if this is going to be offensive but i do think for a short (laughs) second what's wrong with that person um so (laughs) i'm glad to hear that you're dressing them up like that that sounds delicious uh, I know you're expecting a, a big uh, a big party there for Thanksgiving, so I hope it goes well. But uh, I wanted to give you a chance here, Eve, to give thanks to anybody uh, in the H&M family, anybody in your own family. Uh, let's just do it this way. The floor is yours. Yeah, I wanted to give a, a shout out to the drivers out there, those that are out there on the road making things work. They are the reasons that we're here and the reason that I can do what I do. So I, I appreciate them, and I want to send a thank out to them. Also, to our management here and our owners, um, the Muller and Fonda families, they go above and beyond to take care of us and make sure that we have the things that we need. And my whole family works here, you know. So um, <laughs> we're all dependent on them, so we really do appreciate them as well. I, I really love my job. And not a lot, not a lot of people can say that, but, um, and I appreciate the fact that I can do what I do every day, um, and enjoy coming to work with the folks that I work with and doing what I do. So thanks to everybody that makes that possible. Very well said, Eve. And I want to take this moment because I've said this to you off the air before, but I don't know that I've ever said it on the air. A lot of you that listen to this podcast don't understand how instrumental Eve really is. She sets me up with a lot of the interviews I get. She sends me content to talk about. She's always there if I have a question about anything within H&M. So I want to give thanks during this segment to you, Eve. You are a huge part of this podcast and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much for being so good to me. Sure. I appreciate you too, Marcus. You make it easy. Well, we have a lot of fun here and you're a big reason why, Eve. Thank you so much for stopping by to give your thanks and uh, we'll be in touch with you soon. Sounds great. You have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Eve. And now, H&M President James Fonda. I've got President of H&M Trucking, James Fonda, on the phone for our Thanksgiving episode here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. And James, I've realized over my travels, there's two kinds of people in this world. People that do backflips about Thanksgiving and everyone else. Uh, Which category do you fall into? Are you getting pretty psyched about the upcoming holiday or could you take it or leave it? Uh, I mean... So that was, that's a hard one. Yeah, you know, I didn't have that slotted in the list of hard questions for you today. I didn't think I was going to stump that, you. That one's difficult, <laughs> and I'm not going to go into why. Uh, <laughs> oh. I plead the fifth. Okay, plead the fifth. So we're just... Yeah, you know, I, I guess I follow that. I don't give a shit. Okay, that's okay. I mean, look... 
Thanksgiving to me is, and I've already said this, I, Thanksgiving is what happens before Christmas because I really enjoy Christmas. I'm all about it. I, I, I you know, presents and, and fat kid treats. I, I just love all of the food. So I'm, I'm really excited that it will finally be okay after Thanksgiving to act like it's Christmas and be nice to people again. So um, that's oh, yeah. kind of where I sit, you know? See, usually I'm a Grinch, but, you know, in the last, like, Years of uh, me and Le- you know, since I've been with Leslie, and especially the latter years with the kids, I'm my, I'm becoming like ungrinched. So uh, I even said before they, I'm like, well, we're not hosting Thanksgiving this year, so if you want, why don't we just start putting up uh, Christmas stuff so that you know you can actually get some more time out of it, and we're not just sprinting and doing it all at once. Wow. And it's, uh, yeah, I know. Did Did Leslie ask to take a picture to capture that moment? Is James's first uh, non Grinch Christmas, or I, I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> she, uh, but she uh, she welcomed it with open arms. Awesome. She actually got a she she made a little Santa for the office because uh, Eve requested. And I guess we're changing subjects now, but Eve requested a, a, a holiday E type office. And asked if Leslie could help, and I I gave the all clear, and I should have known better. So <laughs> there's a uh, Santa with that Leslie has, is holding a little truck that uh, will come be coming to the office. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm excited yeah. to get to see that. Uh, maybe maybe it'll already be up by the time I get there here in a in a week or so. Maybe you might be lucky enough. Well, I want to give you the opportunity to uh, give your thanks here because since since you don't really care too much about Thanksgiving. I know you might not be making a big speech at the dinner table, but I thought I'd give you the opportunity to make a speech here to uh, to H and M, to the drivers, to uh, the office staff, or your family, anybody else that you want to talk to. The floor is yours to give your thanks. Well, I think we're you know we've always been thankful for the for the drivers and um, the sacrifices they've always had to to make being away from their families. And uh, this year, I don't know if we have that many drivers actually going home for Thanksgiving. Usually the, the holidays they all, they all tend to go home for is the new year's or Christmas, mm-hmm. uh, the time frame. But you know, it's, it's a time to reflect. I asked uh, Stewie yesterday, so I said, what'd you do it? You know, he was a preschool and they said, we learned, you know, about being thankful. I said, Oh, what are you thankful for? I said, mommy and daddy. I said, Oh, good. Anything else? He said, Oh yeah. And God, and I'm like, okay. Those are those are good things to be thankful for. So it kind of you know brought you back to like your innocence level, right? Uh, yeah, like go go back to go back to the base, go back to the home, and say you know I'm glad for everything that it has, has provided to me and to everybody around me. Well, it's it's been great offering uh, some of your some of my podcast regulars here the opportunity to say some nice things and and thank everybody that uh, is involved. And one thing that I can tell is that. The culture there at H and M, as we talk about on this podcast all the time, is a very family oriented culture, and you can tell. I've even had uh, one of my guests get a little bit choked up during his segment, so it's it's just really cool to. I, I'm I'm finally starting to feel like I'm part of the family, James. So like, even if you put me at the kids' table, which is what Dale said he would do if I joined his family for Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I'm just happy to be in the house, man. And, uh, it's, it's been really cool to be part of this. Uh, you know, we're, we're pushing into our second year with this podcast and, um, I just can't say thanks enough for, for having me on board. And, uh, from the entire podcast crew, we're very thankful for H and M as a whole. You guys have been absolutely great. And, uh, I've really enjoyed this last year. Great. Well, I, I really enjoyed you as well, Marcus. All of our insightful conversations. I can't wait to see you. I know it's going to be good. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll be able to actually trade punches about college football in person. Again, the Huskers have nothing to, to talk about. So we can't <laughs> hold on the ball. I don't know if you know this for last fucking place. So I didn't turn over. Excuse my language. But, uh, it's all uh, right. That's all right. It happens when you're talking about college football and an F bomb flies, James, that's just a Tuesday. I, I get it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, you're you're lucky that you're a duck fan right now. That's all. <laughs> hey, I'm lucky that I'm a duck fan every day, James. You knew I was going to say that. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to turn around at this point. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> there's know. a there's an exciting game coming up on uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving, which is the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That's got to be probably one of the most exciting races to 14 that you'll be able to watch over the weekend. So that's, uh, I, my cousin went to Iowa, so I forgot to watch that. Either. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Um, I'm really just shot on all sides. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Concentrate on football. They play or right. on, uh, on the NFL. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'm a Packers fan. And, well, it's, it's just a bad year, man. <laughs> you know, we I'm were... ready for 23 to be open, to be over for all. All reasons. <laughs> we were, I, that's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for 2023 to end. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> hey, you might as well have something. It's kind of funny because before we came on live, we were talking about how life has a way of kicking you while it's down. And uh, football life has really been taking it out on you this year. So I, I'm, I'm sorry for that. Football life and trucking life has been, uh, has been a grayer this year. So uh, I'm ready for the 2024 season to begin. <laughs> well, no wonder you caught the Christmas spirit a little bit this year. I mean, it's about time something made you smile. Might as well be Christmas. Christmas, right? Yep, something. <laughs> <laughs> you have one thing to smile about. <laughs> awesome. So. Well, James, we always appreciate the time. Again, thank you for having us on board here. Uh, you run an awesome company, and it's been really fun to be a part of it. So uh, here's to uh, a great 2024 on our horizon. We're all looking forward to it. Thanks for being here today. Cheers to that. <laughs> Later, bud. Well, that is going to put a bow on it and stuff this turkey. The Thanksgiving episode of the H&M Trucking Podcast has drawn to a close. I want to thank everybody out there for being here today. And all of you that listen to this podcast every single week are what I'm thankful for. You guys keep me uh, with lights on around this place. And it's always fun to uh, hear the feedback. I'm going to be out there in Omaha uh, I'll be out there the December 3rd through the 6th. So if you are uh, in, a driver, you want to come meet me, I would love that. I don't think that you would like need to meet me. Like I'm not saying like, oh, I'm going to be in town. Hold the press. No. But if you'd like to stop by, have a little chit chat. I will be at uh, H&M's office. I think it's going to be the 4th or maybe the 5th that I'll be there. It's the Tuesday in that stretch. So come on by and say hi. I would love to see you guys all and uh, meet those of you that I haven't had the pleasure to meet yet. You're very important to me. The entire H&M family is very important to me and everyone here at this podcast. So on behalf of us all, thank you H&M for being such a great company. Thank you for having so many awesome employees that are willing to come on here and share their time with us. They are truly what I'm thankful for this year as well. And with that, I will wish you happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. Travel safe. Enjoy the time with your family. Uh, it's not always that you get to hang out for a few days and get some downtime. So make the best of it. And we'll see you right around here for an episode of Trucking Up History coming up next week right here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. Stay fresh and stay fed, cheese bags. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the H&M Trucking Podcast. Please leave a review, subscribe, and connect with Marcus over at the H&M Trucking social media channels. And if you're considering a job at H&M, find us at hmtrucking.com. Until next time, stay safe and ahead of the curve drivers.